Hello and welcome to the latest edition of The Nonprofit World. I'm your host, Jerry Valancourt. During this series, we're going to be thrilled to introduce you to some people who are making a difference in the world and their exciting stories. Compared to a lot of us, some of us go home at the end of the day. When these people go home at the end of the day, we know that our homes are better for everything they have done. You know, former President John Kennedy challenged this country, most famously in his inaugural address when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. But my favorite challenge line from him was when he said, things don't happen, things are made to happen. And on this series, we're going to introduce you to some people who are doing that, the kind of people that JFK would have said, now that's what I was talking about. Our first guest today is Lorna Little. Lorna has had her sights on the future by focusing on the once-in-a-lifetime moments that happen in the lives of young people, some of them even before they're born. She is the executive director of St. Agnes Home Incorporated in West Hartford. St. Agnes Home was established over 100 years ago as a safe place where young unmarried mothers could have their babies and spend their first few years together there. The views of American society have certainly changed in the past 100 years, since 1914 when it was founded. The services provided by St. Agnes have expanded since then, but the need for a caring environment in such a critical time in a child's life has really not changed, and that mission remains intact. Lorna Little is a licensed clinical social worker, as well as a cultural diversity trainer, and a community activist, and not to mention, an author. Thank you very much, and it's great to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me, Jerry. We appreciate all of the work you do, but let's take a step back for somebody who may not even know that the St. Agnes home is there. What do you tell somebody when you say, this is what I do, here's where I do it, and I'm proud of it? Well, I start out by saying St. Agnes Home, as you mentioned, has been around for over 100 years and is a program where we provide support, guidance, training, assistance for young people who find themselves in a situation where they're pregnant and they need our support. We provide education. We make sure that they have somewhere to stay because many of the young people who live in our home, and I say it's not a shelter, it is a home, need that support because whatever has happened prior to them coming to us, it's on their parental level. So it's not just that they've become pregnant because in this day and time, if someone becomes pregnant, they can often stay at home. But what if you're in foster care? What if you don't have that support system? So we make sure that they get what they need so that they can be successful young people as well as successful parents because their success impacts all of us. Obviously, at, special, at a special age like that, when infants or children are born, infants are around, it's got to be a very challenging time for a young woman. I cannot imagine myself in that situation. What are some of the emotional issues that you find you have to work with, deal with, from the very beginning when uh, a new client comes to you? Well, you know, there are a variety of challenges. They're coming into a new environment. They're going to be living with other young women. And when you move someone outside of their home, wherever they're going, whether it's to a foster home or coming into our program, there's a level of trauma. You're leaving what you know. So we're dealing with that. But we're also dealing with the fact that there's this impending birth. You know, there's a baby coming. And we want to make sure that they're physically, emotionally, and mentally ready to, to, to take care of that child if that is what they decide. Now, they come to us pregnant, so I always like to make that clear. They, it's not that they come and they become pregnant, they're already pregnant. And so they've decided to have their child and we want to allow them to have the child safely. We're therapists, we have clinicians, we have all the counseling that they need to prepare them to be able to you know, give birth. Sometimes the plan is for adoption so they'll have their child and make a determination that adoption is what they'll choose in terms of placement. But the majority of the young women work with the um, program and the child is maintained in their care. And we want to make sure and assess that they're capable of doing it. But there's a lot that they're dealing with emotionally. They're young. They're in high school. They have to get up very, very early in the morning, just like every other teenager. 
And if anyone out there has worked with teenagers, you clearly understand that they're kind of in that stage of finding themselves. They think they know sometimes more than they know. And so we're in the process of helping them be teenagers, yet understand they have this dual role of being a parent. So they're being pulled kind of sometimes in two directions. I want to be a teen where I have a level of independence and I want to do these things but I'm a parent, so I have a, a, a level of um, connection and, and need that most young people don't have. And it is a challenge, but many of our young women do wonderful and have gone on to do many successful things mm -hmm. in the community. How do young women find out about the uh, services offered? Well, the majority of the young women who come to the program are referred to us through the Department of Children and Families or some type of social services. Um, program, they will refer the young person to us. What is the general reaction of a young woman who comes to you? Well, they're nervous just in terms of being pregnant overall, um, knowing that their life will change. Uh, there are some challenges at times because they're leaving home or leaving a foster home and coming into something new but they settle in very quickly. They uh, understand that they're there to receive support, guidance, training. There's an on-site daycare. They know that this is an opportunity for them to succeed. And once they understand that and see that we have caring staff and individuals who really care about them, Everyone who works at St. Agnes Home, and I can honestly say this as the executive director because I've been there for 12 years, truly is there for the upliftment and support and guidance of this young person. And we see both of them as clients, the mom and the baby. We're there because we're passionate about what we say, raising the future. That is our tagline. I came up with that because that is what we do. We raise the future. At the end of the day, these young people that are in our program and these children will be helping to take care of us in this generation. You know, we're, we'll be older and I want them to be able to be able to, you know, if there are nurses aide or if they are a nurse or they're a teacher, I want them to be fully equipped. I want them to be emotionally, academically and socially ready to be able to go out in the world. That's why they have to juggle school, work home, they have chores, they have to do all the different things that young people do in their home, and then we work towards transitioning them out into the community. Tell me a little bit about your staff. Obviously, you're very proud of them. I am. Well, you know, I know that there are many opportunities. This is The show is called The Nonprofit World, okay? <laughs> so what I will say is that, as you know, in the nonprofit arena, people aren't paid on the level that people with the same exact job working for the state of Connecticut would receive. So here you have people who are working that they gather more than just financial compensation for what they do because nonprofit, the nonprofit arena, you don't make the level of compensation as you would in the corporate world. So we have staff who come there because they want to make a difference. They come there with the education and the training that they need to be able to be effective, but they come most importantly with the heart to serve. And that's the type of uh, program. St. Agnes Home has been around for 100 years. The people who founded the home, the Sisters of Mercy, it was about serving. And that still holds true till today. One of the interesting things, and you alluded to the history of the home, um, founded by a religious order. Um, apparently, from what I've read, there's a wonderful New York Times article that uh, you've given me access to uh, that talked a little bit about the history and it was just fascinating because it reminded me that was a different era, yeah. 1914. Um, can you reflect on how things have changed from, apparently this was a, a, a home that was serving a region that young ladies would come to this from miles around, yeah. but there are other facilities like that today. So the contrast between then and now. Well. Obviously, it was a different time. Things were different within society. There were different social norms. And at that point, the majority of the young women that were coming to the program were sent there possibly by family, um, the church in different places to have the baby and the baby would be placed and there was a plan made for adoption. That was basically at the time 100% 
of the women, the young women that came to the program. With the young women not having a say in the matter, apparently. Most of them didn't. Some did as years progressed, mm -hmm. but early on there, there was often um, not much of a say in the matter. And so, you know, for some, when they hear St. Agnes Home, who remember it from that time, mm -hmm. you know, there's a variety of feelings depending on if they were the birth mother, if it was a child that was born there. Um, we actually celebrated our centennial a couple of years ago, and we had a 85-year-old baby at our celebration. It was a baby born in a home who is now 85 years old. So um, what has changed is that now many of the young people are working towards parenting, keeping their child in the care. There aren't, you mentioned that there are many other places, there really aren't. St. Agnes Home is the, at this point, is the only licensed maternity home in the state of Connecticut. Because times have changed. What is different is that many times people will stay at home with a family member and receive support. So we're providing care for those who really don't have any other form of support. There may be some family connection. We invite and want the young men, the father of the children, to be involved and take a hand in helping support the child, but many of the times they're young as well, and so they may not have the resources on that level. But we do involve them in parenting and making sure that they're successful. One of the things that has to have changed in the decade and a half since you've been there is just the way we communicate as a society, specifically referring to social media here. Mm -hmm. It is a different atmosphere than it was when you started, I would imagine. Can you compare and contrast how things, even in the small, less than a generation, has changed in your experience there? In terms of social media? And in, terms in, in, of in terms of, of how your clients, the people you serve, um, how, how different they may be than, say, a generation ago, the kinds of attitudes they bring, if any. Well, you know, I, I, I would say things are different overall. They're, at the end of the day, they're still teenagers just like any other teenager. So what's different is whatever the teenagers in the community are experiencing, our young people are as well. They do have cell phones. They do utilize social media. They do um, have the access to, you know, different things um, in terms of communication styles. It allows them, you know, sometimes even people who haven't found their parents, um, their biological parents, to connect with them through Facebook. You know, someone knows someone. So use of that is, is beyond just, um, you know, the usual forms of communication and fun. But there are the same situation as many other teens, except for the fact, obviously, that they have a child. But there are positive things with the use of social media. There are these um, learning apps that they have that are geared towards young parents to help guide them. And we make sure they have that on their phone and in the connection. And just, mm -hmm. you know, using it for positive, letting them know that what you put out there on social media is something that the world can see. And so you want to put out something that's, imp you know, that will follow you that you're proud of. School has started again. What would a typical day be like for someone who, uh, lives, in the home. who lives there, is about, let's say, two months away from delivery, still attending school? What's a typical day like? Well, if they haven't had the baby yet, they're, they're going to get up, breakfast, shower, you know, the normal routine, but they'll be preparing to go to school. So they have to be to school, you know, high school starts early, so they're leaving at 7 o'clock to go to school, you know, having their homework from the night before, making sure they're ready, but they're going into um, the local high school. We also have classrooms in our program, so it really depends. If they're at the place where they really physically can't make it to school, we'll have the, um, the in-house program. But the majority of everyone at this point is going to school externally. And so they would go to school, they would you know, have lunch, do the assignments, come back home. Once they're home, they'll attend parenting classes. They'll make sure that all the appointments are met. We'll make sure that any counseling appointments and visits, we're talking with them. The staff is spending time with them. We're making sure that all the classes and the coursework that's needed for school, we have tutors come in. We have wonderful volunteers who 
Uh, we have teachers from um, the school system in West Hartford who come in and, and volunteer, as well as, you know, a variety of other people who come in. We make sure they learn money management and all those types of things. They eat dinner. It's a community um, dinner setting. So all the residents and the babies come together. And so they're watching other young moms feed the baby. So they're not just learning by us teaching and telling. They're, model they're watching the other young moms who are modeling behavior in terms of safe and effective parenting. So there must be some peer counseling going on as well. Yes, yes, there is. Um, it's wonderful when we can listen to another mother come and share, but not only the mothers in the home. Last week we just had what we call an alumni reunion where we had all the uh, moms who have gone on to leave the program with their masters and working out in the community, maintaining their own apartments, come back and speak to the current mothers to say what works well, what doesn't work well, and how you can be successful. So we utilize that. And I'll bet you'll have clients visiting you several years later and look at my toddler, look at my, my yes. four-year-old, my five-year-old. One of the funny stories we have is, um, you know, a young woman got her car. She received her license, and she had already told us that, but then she purchased her first car, and she drove right over to the home, and we're all running outside. And, you know, anyone walking by Mayflower Street at that moment probably thought we were all just a little uh, excited because we were jumping up and down as we looked at her new car. You know, a young lady just got her master's degree in public health, and she's using her experience to go back and share with others how we can make that change that you talked about, how we can be impactful. So to hear them use their stories to turn around and help others in the community, um, it, that's the most powerful and amazing thing to me. Are there challenges? Is everything gonna be perfect with everyone that comes through the home? No, but that's the same thing with all teenagers. You're gonna have some challenges at time. There are sometimes people as well as they wanna do in terms of being a parent, they're just not capable and they struggle. And the blessing is that we're there to help assess and guide to make an appropriate plan with their social worker for mm -hmm. that child. Well, as we were saying, things don't change. They are made to change. So thank you for that. You. Appreciate spending time with us today, Lorna. Thank you. Lorna Little, the Executive Director of St. Agnes Home Incorporated in West Hartford. We'll be right back with more. St. Agnes Home was built in 1914, and since then, we've continued to provide services to young mothers and their children. We provide hope and support and allow them to grow and flourish in a way that allows them to be the ultimate success. There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying Oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life The greatest gift of all We can't go on Pretending day by day That someone, somewhere will soon make a change We are a part of God's great big family and the truth, you know love is all we need.
And so we all must lend a helping hand.